We've been talking about how we've been uh, avoiding some of these uh, nasty headlines, I guess you say, these tape bombs so far in day one. How do you read into where negotiations are going and how these talks are going to play out? It's good that the parties are meeting face to face. Uh, it's very unclear whether these negotiations will yield a ceasefire and what is the sort of impending uh, trade dispute. Uh, but I think it's good that the parties are talking face to face. Uh, I have some optimism, uh, but on the whole, I think it's going to take considerably more than the discussions that are happening this week for any lasting resolution of the significant trade differences between the U.S. and China. So what, what is some potential smaller wins then, I guess, for, for the U.S.? I mean, is it going to be more about market access, China potentially buying more U.S. goods? Uh, what would be a credible promise from China? Well, certainly the U.S. is trying to get the trade deficit down, uh, and that may be something that can be accomplished in part. Uh, but, of course, that's largely driven by macroeconomic factors, the high savings rates in China, the low savings rates in the U.S. But there are things that can be done to reduce that deficit. The tougher thing are the cause of the potential 50 or $150 billion of U.S. tariffs. And that's the result of the Section 301 report, which heavily takes aim at China's practices that are trying to promote China's technology growth at the expense of the U.S. and other countries. And that is going to be a much harder thing to resolve, certainly in the short term. Yeah, I think that really just hammers down the fact that this goes beyond just trade, Robert, right? It really goes down to how, you know, this rivalry between China and U.S. becoming these superpowers. And it really hones into more of the structural issues that China is uh, going through right now that, China, you know, the U.S. is saying it cannot no longer be tolerated. Do you think President Trump is the right candidate to actually get their way? Is, is he the one that is the right person to confront China on this? Well, he certainly has the president and he's confronting China. I mean, these are issues that we've known about for a long time that we've tried to work in a number of ways to address. And certainly President Obama tried to address. I think the threat of imposing taxes, uh, largely born on the American consumers, as a way of getting China's attention um, is it's a it, it's a big threat. Um, but what is unclear is that if China simply agrees to take steps to reduce their deficit, uh, the U.S. deficit with China, that is not necessarily responsive to the heart of the Section 301 report, which is all about intellectual property protection, um, state-sponsored efforts in China to secure sensitive U.S. technologies, and other methods which force foreign companies to enter into joint ventures in China that yield intellectual property going to China. Those are going to be much harder to accomplish, and that seems highly unlikely to be resolved in two days of meetings in Beijing. Uh, you know, and Robert, you know, uh, our, one of our guests earlier had pointed out how this is this is a delegation and a situation that is, quote, not normal. You know, you've got, uh, you know, on the one hand, Mnuchin, who is, I believe, looked upon more favorably by the Chinese. There's a warmer relationship there. Uh, and then you've got, of course, the hardliners like Navarro and Lighthizer. It's kind of a, a you know, a split delegation almost going into these right. talks. And, and I, you know, I wonder you know, what, you know, what kind of progress could come out? I mean, you know, could there be progress on one side from the Mnuchin side, but none on the other, on the Lighthizer side? And then what do you end up with? Well, I look, I think we hopefully we will get some progress. Uh, talking is better than not talking. But I think the large U.S. delegation will actually suggest to China that there's really only one participant who ultimately matters in this, and that's the president of the United States, the person who's not in the room. So I think they and hope they will make progress. I know they're committed to it. It's hugely important right. to try to address these right. structural challenges. But I think the size of the U.S. delegation will simply reinforce there's only really one person at the end of the day who calls the shots, and that person is back here in Washington and not in Beijing this week. Uh, and, you know, I know you're not overly optimistic, uh, Robert, neither are, uh, you know, many of the guests we've talked to. Uh, when we talk about protracted um, negotiations here, how long do you think these are, this is going to last for? 
Well, the U.S. is moving ahead to get the authority to impose the tariffs on $50 billion a year of Chinese products. I suspect that process will continue, even with the progress, if there is any, coming out of Beijing this week. The question then, does the U.S. impose those as soon as they have the authority, which would be another month or so? I think it's highly likely the U.S. will impose those. And then China will retaliate. The question then is, does the U.S. go ahead with another $100 billion in tariffs? I hope not on all of these things. But I think we're more likely to see the U.S. put in place some tariffs than the likelihood that China can make enough assurances for the U.S. to back off of its very serious and very legitimate uh, cause for concern. I say that as somebody who doesn't like tariffs and don't think they should be used. I don't think that's the best approach, but I think that is the path that the U.S. is on right now.